गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग इन दिस क्लास विल गो विथ द लास्ट कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ मॉड्यूल टू दैट स्टार्ट विथ एक्सपेंशन जॉइंट सो कैन एवरीबडी सी दिस लाइफ yes sir yes okay so as we all know that uh, why we are going to provide expansion joints so what are the main uh, applications and reasons behind this expansion joints can somebody why we prefer this expansion joints because of what reasons due to coefficient of thermal expansion and contraction sir during summer and uh, okay. winter season okay during summer and uh, in winter season when temperature changes the volume of the concrete it will get changes according to the variations in the temperature during in the summer season it is going to expand and during in the winter season or in the colder regions which is going to shrink right so that leads in the change in its concrete volume after the change in the temperature correct so here also in the prefabrication concept various uh, the movements are going to be applied on the structural members and uh, because of hold on a minute just i need a minute so various cum cumulative moments in the sense either it uh, it is because of uh, the seismic waves or either it is from the lateral pressures from the adjacent buildings or even with uh, the thermal due to the thermal expansion part the concrete it may get expands so here we need to prefer a certain joints to overcome uh, the additional stresses on the structural members right so for that the main reason is to provide this expansion joints so here the cumulative moments as well as uh, the differential expansion moment of adjacent wall materials which are generally taken by specially designed expansion joints basically these types of joints they are going to prefer for the wall constructions and then so because an expansion joint it may have to accommodate the considerable moment on this particular wall sections and it should be designed as simply as possible so here you can see in the diagram this is the first concrete floor and this one is the second concrete floor and in between this we are going to prefer these expansion joints so here however the temperature changes or because of some uh, stresses which will get developed on these members which are going to overcome by using i mean it will get adjust uh, with respect to these expansion joints so if start, if this particular concrete floor or wall panel starts pushing this member because of the expansion process this particular joints it will get adjust with these aspects right similarly with the second floor also right and uh, to overcome these stresses which will get developed on these members and even uh, whatever the expansion process because of the temperature changes that one it can overcome by providing this additional expansion joints in between the members okay so these are the minor ones just they have enlarged and shown this you can't see these members thoroughly by your visual inspection right so they have provided uh, because of various reasons and here the seismic seals which are a special case of expansion joints and these joints which are generally quite large and they are used between new and existing buildings that is the main reasons like if you are constructing a particular building just over the older one right so i mean because of the moisture content which is present in the adjacent building that may get effect on the new building right so to overcome that 
we are going to provide these seismic seals so that no additional water or moisture it should get penetrate through these wall panels and the uh, structure will remain as it is right and these particular joints uh, are generally quite large and here you can see that right so these joints what they are going to provide between the two walls right and uh, here from the moisture and to allow the structures to move from uh, the thermal expansion as well as wind and even drift and seismic motions without any damage so it is going to overcome uh, all the parameters which are going to affect on these structural members like because of uh, the earthquake movements or those waves what it is going to hit so because of that pressure also the concrete structures or these wall panels can move so because of that reasons also the chances of cracks may get appears because of the additional force on these members and because of the wind velocity also in the high rise buildings and all which is going to provide some lateral pressure on the adjacent structural element so because of that reason also the chances of the concrete it may get cracks because of this additional forces and then because of drift and even with the seismic motions it is going to overcome without providing any damage and here these seismic joints which are designed to accommodate the both vertical as well as the horizontal movement okay so they are available in sizes from 2 to 12 inches approximately 50 to 305 mm so here whatever the seismic joints they have provided so that's the reason the main uh, application of these seismic joints to overcome both this vertical as well as the horizontal movement so vertical uh, movement in the sense whatever the load which will get applied on the members so which directly transfer to the earth so because of that vertical movement and horizontal movements they are like uh, the primary waves as well as the secondary waves whatever it will get hits with a certain process and then one more thing because of uh, the wind velocity also so because of wind velocity also that members which will get moves from a certain distance means they are like a minor one so because of that reason also the concrete it may get move from one place to the other place and here the materials for this expansion joint that must be chosen for their ability to absorb the appreciable movement while performing their primary functions of controlling the movement of moisture as well as the air so because of air and moisture that concrete it has certain chances to expand right and uh, based upon that moisture content what it is going to present in that members and even uh, the amount of air which will be there which is going to react with those members right so based upon that the materials they are going to choose to fill in this joints okay and here you can see the different epoxies as well as uh, the expansion materials they are going to place so these particular materials which is going to overcome those all wind and seismic waves reactions and even uh, the other chances like the lateral pressures and all it is going to work so here you can see these are the expansion joint materials and here also you can see in most of the cases this requires that special gasket materials to be used rather than the sealants so which is going to overcome uh, the maximum lateral forces from the adjacent members by providing this gasket okay so otherwise the in some cases if you have used uh, the sealants so sealants after certain years what it happens that property of the sealants it may get reduced so that time the sealants it will comes out uh, part by part here whatever you have seen so it will get hardened and uh, because of various lateral pressures so this member this concrete will lose its sorry this expansion material will lose its property and it will get hardened and it comes out 
right so during that case is what it happens again whatever we have provided for the expansion joint uh, that will be in no use so when you have provided uh, the special gasket material so which is going to resist for longer duration okay and uh, here otherwise the requirements for expansion joints which are similar to those listed previously for other joints you can go with uh, other expansion material also but the thing is like providing this special type of cascade materials uh, will helps to for the longer period of durations in here moving on to the next concept that is the construction of precast structural components like purlins especially these are the roofing materials we have studied in uh, your engineering base purlins principal rafters and roof trusses lattice girders sorry <clears throat> gable frames and uh, moving on to the next part that is single span single storied frames single storied buildings slabs as well as the beams and columns so we have studied uh, the process of manufacturing process of slabs beams as well as the columns okay now we will move with this parts of this roofing system that is purlins and other components here uh, the purlins and rafters are usually these are the solid members either they have made it by using wood material or in some cases they have made it for made it by using steel materials okay so for long spans they may lattice girders or trust beam what we can call and uh, here these purlins which are like the horizontal beam along the length of the roof so these are resting on the principles and uh, they are going to support the common rafters or boards so here you can see in the diagram ah, okay so these horizontal members what you can see these horizontal members these horizontal member are called purlins so they are going to rest on the rafters so these inclined vertical members are called rafters so these particular purlins they are going to rest on these rafters and then whatever the roofing materials we are going to place as in the form of uh, tiles and all they are going to rest on these purlins as well as the rafters okay and uh, here the next part that is these freely supported purlins are designed as uh, fish belly members so this is a special case where uh, the suspended rafters they are going to take uh, the additional space in the roofing part so that additional spacing which can be provided for various applications like uh, they can put up the sheets or they can even put up uh, the other convenient materials just to get certain shades and these purlins which are designed as cantilever wheels they are uh, usually Flange members and the cross section feature that is dependent upon the spans of purlins and the slope of the roof. So, which type of uh, roofing you are going to provide, and what about the slope? We have seen various roofing part or trusses like uh, the king post as well as the queen post. So, because of uh, the additional loads, whatever it will comes on those roofing systems depends upon that. They are going to choose which type of they need to provide and here you can see the parts of this roofing system these are the ridge that is the topmost horizontal member through this they are going to connect uh, these rafters and then these first two rafters are called principal rafters and whatever the inclined members will come after this principal rafters are called common rafters okay and this is a common rafter this one this one and all and here you can see the purlins so these purlins they have connected with these rafters since from starting member i mean since from this principal rafter till end of that and this joist is again the horizontal members which is going to resist or connect the adjacent rafters which are connected at the bottom place 
and uh, here <coughs> you can see still more uh, as per the different parts of the roofing materials you can see here the additional members called hip rafters especially they have connected with this hip jack so when the load carrying capacity will be increased so to overcome that additional loads they are going to provide this hip jack so that which is going to get more strength for this principal rafters and the other common things which are in general they have given like the hip rafters so especially they have provided that the valley cases and here you can see the valley rafters so where you will get the sections in this way i mean whatever the angle of inclination which is less than 180 degree they can provide this valley rafters and then you have seen the common rafters and then overhang when that principal rafters or rafters which crosses the joist or this plate member so that suspended part we can call it as overhang so this particular part okay and then other things they have clear so here moving on to the next part that is cleat so this cleat is the connecting member to joint any two members here in this rafter case which is purlins as well as is going to connect the rafters so this is a connecting member which can connect two different elements like purlins as well as the rafters in this roofing system and uh, next these lattice girders so here in this concept, uh, you need to check with these parts of these roofing systems like purlins and rafters. And even in prefabricated concepts, they are going to manufacture these purlins and rafters as per the design. And then the placing of these rafters as well as the purlins, they need to concentrate more because here they need to maintain the proper angle of inclination right at a particular angle they need to place it so with respect to the other structural members like columns beams and all just they need to check with a plumb whether it is a 90 degree vertical member or 180 degree horizontal member or not but here they need to maintain that exact angle of inclination so that is a bit difficult to place this purlins as well as the rafters and then moving on to the next part that is lattice girders so here in this lattice girders which is like a truss girder where the load carried by the web lattice metal so here you can see the lattice metal so here whatever the load which will comes on these girders which is going to transfer to this lattice metal right so this particular metal and uh, it has been supplanted in modern construction with welded or bolted plate girders. So either they can go with uh, the nut and bolt connections and uh, in the updated versions, they are going with some welded connections for this. And that is going to use this more material but have lower fabrication and maintenance cost. So here might be which is going to consist more material than the earlier one i mean the conventional one normal girders what we can call so in this lattice girders the materials whatever they have used which will be more but cost of construction of this lattice girders also it will be more but the thing is like which is going to carry these additional loads which will comes on this and even the maintenance cost also we can save here and then here you can see this just they have given a, a small example about this lattice girders and then the gable frames so gable frame usually you have seen at the faked place i mean which is exposed to the environment which shows with a triangular in its position right here this is also a gable frame and this is also a gable frame so generally which is with a triangular portion of wall that between the edges of intersecting roof pitches roof which is in the sense so here from this particular part which start with the triangular shapes 
and uh, the shape of this cable and how it is detailed that is depends upon uh, the structural system which are used in the manufacturing process of this cable frame so that is going to re reflect with respect to the climates and uh, the, which are the materials availability and even with respect to the aesthetic concerns okay so this is belongs to the small parts of this module 3 And now, in the first module, we have seen uh, the various production parts of, okay, production of this prefabrication. Yeah, so stand method, conveyor method, and even uh, the aggregate method. So we'll watch some small video clips regarding uh, the prefabrication concepts in our daily life. So is this audible to everyone, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This video slide is visible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So here you can see this is small video clips which shows the prefabricated elements, how they are going to manufacture and how they are going to place and uh, the erection process, what you can see. These are the structural members and the details, what you can see within that, the reinforcement details. Now initially, as I said uh, in the module one, initially they will go with some line outs and uh, through that line notes, they are going to erect those members. So these are the connecting members and the joints so that they can connect this column to the wall portion. So this is at the corner place and now these columns as well as the wall portion, they are going to connecting with the floorings. So like that, uh, all the considerable wall portions, they are going to connect with one member to the other member. Similarly, they can go with uh, all the structural members as per the design concepts. So now they are placing the beams on top of these wall portions. These are the connecting members of one beam to the other beam or some other adjacent materials with respect to because here they can go with various connections depends upon the considerable loads on these members Now they are placing the floor panels, right? You can see the connections. Similarly, they have done with all the parts. Now again, the next floor is going to be constructed. Like that, uh, with respect to the proper planning and all, we can go with this. And this is that interior part, what you can see. You can go with the electrical connections and even with the plumbing part, wherever it is needed. Loading particles and then the wall panels. Even you can go with some interior designs when you have planned properly. You can manufacture these things even in manufacturing site itself. So 
one you can go with some aesthetic view parts to here Oops, so this is small one and then the cast productions for slabs you can see here this is the manufacturing site you can see how exactly they are going to manufacture these things you can prepare this one even in manufacturing site or even in the construction site also the thing is like the possible area should be available for the manufacturing process now these are directing equipments what it comes now the placing of concrete when finishing and all it can be done there itself see various experiments are going to be manufactured here we can see the lifting connections what you can see so through this they are going to lift those several elements see in this case the structural members are manufactured in the construction site itself so there is no wrong in that the thing is like they have manufactured first and then they have installed that one by using the direction equipments Compared to conventional building, so many changes you can see in this prefabricated concepts. Even the storage area, even the lifting part, even the manufacturing process. A single mishandling of the members or negligence that is going to cost a huge loss for the construction work. So we need to concentrate more, especially on these concepts. Each and every parts of the procedures should not do even a single percent of negligence the same thing if you repeated in the conventional building some or other things can be altered but here that is going to cost huge loss for the entire project budget This video is visible to everyone, right? Or no, simply... Yes, sir. Yes, okay. the production process of prefabrication initially they are going with the, the line out part since you can see these things in the manufacturing site so within this particular line mark they are going to place the reinforcements and then 
structures has to be manufactured. So everything which is worked with the automation part, so no manual work is much required for this. So here you can see the stand method. Now they have prepared the mold as per the required shape as well as the dimensions and even uh, if needed they can go with some electrical connections within that and here they are going to connect with uh, the reinforcements for these members of the concrete what you can see here the initially they have placed this one in the pumpable concrete machine or the pouring concrete machine so as per the requirement that concrete will get poured with a given thickness over there can see the placing of the concrete initially the first layer they are going to place the reinforcements and then the vibration and uh, the other compaction process has to be done because of the vibration the proper the compaction you can observe here see the vibration process so that the concrete is going to be compact the concrete is being compacted now and after that we're going to rotate these members after the concrete gets hardened it will get rotated and it is going to place at the certain area. Yeah, after the concrete get hardened, it will get rotated. And, and here in this part, you can see these are the different uh, spaces to store these panels, structural elements, especially the wall panels or slabs. They are going to place one above the other in this way so that they can save the time and even uh, the storage area also. This is the place after the concrete get hardened. So now that member which is going to be attached to this so this temporary supports they are going to be removed After the concrete will get hardened, we are going to store that one as per the required location. Now this is 
the lifting process of the hardened structural element. This comes under the sandwich wall panels. We'll be studying that one in the next module. This is the uh, animated video what you can see i think most of the concepts are clear Matching mode in the sense uh, the required materials are going to be placed there and then it is going to mix. In the control room, we're going to monitor each and every procedure steps over there. This is bar bending set and labor room, engineer's rooms will be there. So it's just in the prefabricated manufacturing site. This is the storage area. Which is, no, this is in the manufacturing phase it is. We have prepared the formwork or mold for that. Now that concrete is going to be poured within those members. So within that mold, that concrete is being poured as per the required shape and size how they have placed the mold it depends upon that the mold is going to be formed so after that through the girders we are going to lift those this is the storage area even you can see how exactly they are going to store those this is for the transportation process So you can see various videos are available the, that explains the same procedure part. Okay. So I think uh, the things are getting clear, whatever we are going to discuss. Yes, sir. So if you are having any doubts, you can just ask the questions if any concepts are not clear to you. You can put up a message or else you can ask directly. If you don't have any doubts and all, just put your name and USN in the chat box and you can disconnect the call. Yes, Naveen, please. Sir, nothing, sir. Nothing, sir. Nothing. Oh, just you have raised the hand, so I thought uh, something. No, sir. Instead of uh, texting my person, I just yeah, press no the button. No problem. Yes. Thank you. So many students are not uh, present. All are fine, right? Your friends and all. Yes, sir. Only seven members, eight members are there. What about uh, the remaining people? Okay. Let's 
discuss these things.